Greetings and welcome, East Hampton, South Hampton, and community. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Cafe with Sandra Kay. Today, we are standing in the heart of the Shinnecock Reservation in South Hampton, New York. We are celebrating the 76th Shinnecock Annual Powwow. The powwow honors, celebrates, and preserves the rich heritage of the Native American nations. Today, we look forward to song, to dance, to arts and crafts, jewelry, and music that is akin to the Native American culture. With us today, we are honored to have Gnu Benton. Gnu, please join me. Gnu Benton is a singer and songwriter. He is also recognized for his award-winning short film, Looking Glass. Gnu is going to lead us through the events and the ceremonies that we look forward to celebrating today. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you, Gnu. So, Gnu, please uh, share with us. The powwow has been going on for years. You have been attending this. Um, what should we all look forward to? What are some of the highlights that really speak to you about the powwow? Well, first of all, let me explain what a powwow is. Uh, a powwow is a celebration of song and dance of Native American people. In this country's history, uh, Native American people weren't actually viewed as human beings. And it was a very dark time in this country where Native American people weren't allowed to be Native American people. And uh, in the time of the government pushing Native people onto reservations, and let me just add that uh, the territory that we're on is not technically a reservation because a reservation is, um, by all definitions, a concentration camp. This is an unceded territory that the Shinnecock people have never been moved from. This has always been their territory since time immemorial. In the time when the government were pushing Native American people onto territories, the people began to become very, very sick. And uh, there was a time when the people started getting their pride back and powwows became a birth of celebrating a time when we said enough is enough. Okay. We are going to sing, we're going to dance, and we're not going to be killed anymore for speaking our language. We're going to visit other communities, we're going to travel the country and share who we are. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm Sandra, you are? I'm Craig Merrick. Hey Craig, pleasure to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, love your garb. Thank Craig, you. uh, which uh, native uh, nation are you from? <clears throat> Um, Dakota, Dakota Sioux, Northern Cheyenne, I come from originally from Lamedur, Montana. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. And uh, have you been attending this powwow for? I have since I was a little boy. Um, I started attending probably around age 10. So okay. my family moved out here to the East Coast when I was just a little boy. Always came to the Shinnecock celebration every year. Okay, that's yeah. great. And I heard that you are a champion dancer. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I travel around and uh, just dance as much as I can. Okay, uh, what does uh, dance symbolize for you? <clears throat> well, I dance the northern traditional style and the, that originated a long time ago when they would come back from war, when they come back from, uh, uh, you know, going on, on raids or, or stealing horses or counting coup on an enemy, they would come back and they would tell a story with their style of dance. So this, the men's traditional dance is one of the oldest forms of dancing that we have on the Powwow Trail. That's fantastic. And we're going to see you come in at the grand entry. Uh, yeah. Yes. And yep. uh, perform that dance. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And um, is this one of the things that you look forward to most uh, at the powwow? What other? Uh, uh, this is what I do during the summertime. summertime? So during during winter, I, I teach fifth grade out in Hoopa Valley, California, where my wife lives. Okay. My wife is also a Shinnecock, so I, okay. I'm kind of married into the tribe out here. Uh, but during the summertime, this is what we do. This is kind of kind of like how the cowboy follows the rodeo. This is okay. how Indians follow the polo trail. Okay, so, and how often do you do the dance? I mean, uh, almost every weekend. Every so weekend. it depends on uh, how far the polo is. Depends on how much money we got to get there. Right. Uh, like last week, we're in Connecticut, um, and then the week before that, there was a small one in Mohegan. So it's kind of every every week. Oh, that's um, fantastic. But usually this is the last stop for me to sure. start the school well, year. Well, the Labor Day weekend, yeah. start of the school yeah. year, <laughs> yeah. big celebration. And yeah. to you, what has evolved 
as the uh, the Shinnecocks. And uh, what are you really proud of and excited about that's happening now? I just think their hospitality. Um, their hospitality has always been a real big piece in my life. Um, they've always treated me like family. I've always felt home every time I've come here for you know since I was a little boy, about, about 10 years old. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the elders have seen me grow up from a young man to a, to a man now. Um, but just just their hospitality and their always welcoming nature has always been a um, thing that I've always loved coming here. You know, seeing the Lord's Prayer with you know the late Princess Chi Chi and, and all their traditions that they still have here. So that's always been something that uh, I've always I've always looked forward to coming here and, and witnessing and seeing because it makes me makes me remember better times. You know, it makes me remember when I was a little boy growing up and. All of that stuff. And all the family are here and yeah. friends from childhood. So yeah. there's nothing better than that. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. Okay, well, we are going to look forward to seeing your dance. Oh, what's that? Uh, an honor to meet you and oh. thank you for the interview. Yeah. Pleasure. What's that? Pete, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, ma'am. Yes. So you are one of the master of ceremonies here. Correct. I'm a co MC along with Mr. Charlie Smith, who's uh, well known in the, here in the area. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be able to serve in that capacity along with the other great individuals who are part of the powwow staff that have been brought in by the powwow committee, of course, to Shinnecock Nation. And what is your responsibility? So our responsibility is really to uh, make sure that the agenda is maintained too, that the information that uh, we provide is equivalent to what the people are seeing, hearing, and most of all, feeling during the celebration. So for the spectators uh, who are you know, incredible supporters each and every year, that it's important that they understand what it is that's taking place in front of them. So that way it's not a form of entertainment. It's really about seeing a way of life for the Shinnecock So do people. you announce before each uh, event, each dance, each song exactly what we're going to experience? We do. In fact, I, I'm usually I'm brought in just to uh, really provide that, that educational opportunity. Mr. Charlie Smith, of course, he's a wealth of knowledge and of course he can tell some great jokes and keep the people laughing. But it's really important that we have that balance of education, uh, entertainment, things that people enjoy seeing, but most of all that they're going to leave here knowing much more than what they came through those gates with in their heads and most, most of all in their minds and their hearts. So. That's fantastic. Well, it's a pleasure, honor to meet you. And what are you, is there anything specific you're looking forward to today? Well, I'm looking forward to, of course, the contest, uh, the specials that take place and any honorings uh, that are present. You know, the gathering when it comes to the contest is always a crowd pleaser, the men's fancy, the women, the, the children, the elders, all being out there in the arena together. But most importantly is the reason why we're doing what we're doing. It is to honor, it is to respect, it is to remember, it is to moralize, memorialize, you know, those who are no longer with us, especially what we've all gone through, not just tribal people, but all people have gone through for the past two, two and a half years. So most importantly, leave here with the understanding that this is a great opportunity for anyone to be a part of and to witness that the Shinnecock Nation, su such a wealth of history there, and, and most important, not most important, but equally, is to understand what they're doing today and what they're looking forward to doing for tomorrow. Yes, anything you'd like to share with us about what might be forthcoming? Uh, well, I'm going to leave that to the trustees, okay. they're of course the Shinnecock <laughs> Nation themselves. Uh, but again, okay. come Thank out you. Forward. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Thank you for your time. Oh, so, oh, you oh, are oh, Chief Sachem, oh, yes. yes. Elder of Council. Yes. Please, is that correct? Well, yeah. please, please tell us, what does that mean and what is the responsibility of Well, we have a seven member council. Okay. And the council okay. consists of the uh, chairman, vice chairman, secretary to the uh, general council, secretary to the council of trustees, the, um, treasurer, and my responsibilities as a sage is that you have to be 60 years, 55 years of age. And the important thing of it is to, to carry on traditions and to give the knowledge, your knowledge of our traditions and how we have come about throughout the years. And in this day and age, this time, you have yeah, if you want so much going on I'm with saying, social media and now we have Zoom meetings and texting and emails and all of that, which is a great thing because that 
gives us an opportunity to reach out to more people and to all of those people who are not living on territory, okay. also members that live off territory. And now they're able to participate in our meetings, our tribal meetings that we have. How here. often are the meetings? The meetings are, we have our regular meetings, we have once, four times a month. And then we have a general council meeting, which is once. And if you are the decision making body? Yes, we are the leadership. Okay. We are the decision making body. We are the ones that. I know, like in the We are the governments of our. Oh, of our fantastic. Yes. You know, and um, as the sachem, my responsibility is to try to keep that balance between modern times and. Traditional. Okay. You did have one question for me earlier about uh, the stage and a little bit of the history behind that. Uh, yeah, the stage. It was built originally. This this um, was formed in a different area, and it was on the same premise of bringing Indians together to be in Shinnecock. And as it grew we uh, had to expand so the stage was put here and that way it gives a, the audience a better view yes. of what goes on because normally at other powwows we're not on a stage we're in the center you know but this gives the spectators a little bit better view and it was formed in the shape of a drum the half drum and originally it was small it wasn't that big and it was big enough for all the people to, to participate in it, to participate but as it grew we had to expand it and we had to make it bigger. So if you look on the outside, the, the painting, on the outside, you can hold the, the raw high stretched over the drum. So that's what this stage represents. So we say that the drum itself is a, uh, it represents the heartbeat of the creator, his or herself, right? Um, we say that it represents the thunder beings that connect the spiritual realm with the earthly realm. Fantastic. Um, inside all of us, it said that holds the drum beat, the creator's voice within all of us, that heartbeat that we hear. Yes. And it's that voice that combined with the music that makes us want to move. And this is why music is so important to every culture. Yes. So especially to us, when we sing and we dance to that that song, it creates this very beautiful ceremony. And combined with whatever story that we have that goes along with the dances, whatever song is being sung, because every song is different, um, it creates the ceremony that uplifts the spirit of the people. Yes. So when people come together, um, what they're saying is that we're going to celebrate who we are. And over the years, powwows have become a, a competitive venue where it's become also an econ economic opportunity for tribes to be able to make a little money, to be able to have a little success in this colonized world that we live in. There's over a hundred arts and crafts, hundred vendors. Yes. And all of these people come from across the country to come visit the Hamptons. Yes. To come celebrate with us. This is a four day event. Yep, this is a four day, for all four days. And obviously they, they know that it's a, a a very big opportunity for them. Uh, we're gonna bring it home with this one. I need everybody to what they have. They have yeah. soft clams, they have fried clams, but they have iced tea, basically. Yeah, I'm going to come back later for some clams on the half shell. There's Uncle Wayne again, having a stuffed clam. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a clam for It's Uncle Wayne again, having a stuffed clam. Check it out. Yeah, what's the junk filming? Let's put some cocktail sauce. Wow. That looks great. Let's put some hot sauce. Mm. Then you got to take a fork. You got to eat it slow because it's $7. Right. You got to get ready. There you go. 
So, good morning. What do you think of um, the most here? To all the spectators, to all the sound of their voices. Uh, I think sure that food, you food, 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 And then, uh, of course, jewelry, probably. So, Sandra. Yes. Um, for a, a good time in my life, I was what we call a wampum maker. And uh, I wanted to introduce you to somebody that I uh, mentored into the arts of creating wampum. And I'll have him explain that to you. He's my cousin Gordell. Gordell, okay. right? So I want you to meet him here. Gordell, Morning. pleasure to meet you. Me too. Yes. I love what I see here. Thank you, thank you. Please talk to us about it. Yes, yeah, so as Ganu said, I started making wampum about 12 years ago. Um, he taught me the basics of how to look at the shell, how to how to use it. Where does the shell come from? Where the, the sh I mean, the clam shell oh. comes from a lot of different places. places. But the ones that have the best color purple that we use to make wampum yes. comes from the waters between New Jersey and Massachusetts. Yes. And here on Long Island is a prime spot where we would get the shells from and make wampum. Right. So just very quickly, um, just to add, uh, Sandra. Yes. So wampum itself, the shell, um, I grab that shell again real quick. So it's there's this very beautiful story about the purple, and it's said that no matter where you are in the world, as he was saying, that there are shells all over the world, but only here on the east, northeast coast does the purple actually exist. So what I've been told is that the purple actually represents the blood of the people and the, the tie of the people to the land itself. And that the purple is an indicator of how well that we treat the land. And obviously there is scientific you know, reasoning behind that. If there's no more purple that shows up in our clamshells, we're not doing our part as Indian people to take care of our, our land itself. Our um, environment. So, very interesting. The other reason why the shell is so important is because the shell plays a very important role uh, in the I creation go? of human beings in our creation story. It said that the creator actually used the shell beings to blow life into human beings themselves to make us because that that spirit he wanted to give us was so powerful that every time Good morning, Shinnecock, how are you? That's my dad. That's my dad. <laughs> so every time so every time the creator wanted to blow life into us the earth that he used always exploded so he used the shell being to be able to help transfer that life so that it can be contained within, within us. So, in very essence, when we when we carry the shells, when we wear it, like my cousin is here, yes, it, we're considered complete and whole as human beings. So, uh, from the basics, I just started to expand, uh, making my jewelry, uh, making my beads, and so where we are today. Well, this is what I do for a living. That's beautiful. So you put the, you got the shells, and then you've got to cut out the purple to get this beautiful array of what yep. we're looking at here. So what I do usually is uh, trace whatever I'm going to make on the outside of the shell. Then I do my rough cuts, and then I do um, lapidary work to refine everything, polish, uh, smooth out. And so I try to do a lot of different shapes, sizes. Uh, so that's it. so that yeah, I have a good variety of stuff. Of like here, is this a, a spear or? No, I mean a lot of shapes are just uh, like traditional shapes, uh, okay. of feathers, things that people like and uh, sell well, and so that's kind of what I what I do with them. Okay, and what else do you have over there? I see some necklaces. And so I have some necklaces, some earrings with quill work. I like to collaborate with a lot of different artists. Because I don't do quill work, I don't do bead work or inlay work. So what I do is I collaborate with other people that do do that or silver work. That's beautiful. So I have a, a variety of different things that I have at, at my table. So sure. fantastic and turquoise, which is awesome. so. The, yeah. So this this is uh, from a friend of mine. He does a lot of silver work for me, and so he wanted asked me to uh, carry a few of his things. And so just to have a lot of different varieties so people can see, um, pick out whatever they want. It's not just one thing. Okay, so wampum, historically, um, we use it in a lot of different ways. One of the main ways is uh, if you see these purple beads here, we would make purple and white beads. And out of that, we would make uh, wampum belts. 
wampum belts is like a form of documentation. So you have treaty belts, historical belts, prophecy belts, family belts, anything major significant in our community would be put into a wampum belt. And they can be from as long where you need a few people holding them to smaller ones. And so that's so one of the recording? Yes. It's like a historical recording. Then we also use it for our personal adornment. We used it for um, honoring ceremonies, funerals, giveaways. And we still use that today in that same way. Okay. Many times when we go to other places, we bring gifts of wampum. Um, we still do the uh, wampum belt, so we still use it in our, in our yeah. traditional way. And was it used for trade, wampum? Yeah, we also used it for trade. But a lot of people have like the, the currency aspect of it because that's what's taught. And But to us as Native people, that wasn't really it. When the colonists saw the uh, Northeast here, the value that we had for it, and it was universal here, they used it as a currency for about 20, 30, 30, 40 years because they didn't have a unified currency. So, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Good to meet you today. Too. And thank I'll you. Be thank back. you. I'll see you later. All right. Okay. Can you, let's, uh, I'd like to ask you about the grand entry, which we're going to see shortly. Mm -hmm. What is the grand entry? Um, so the grand entry comes from a very ceremonial place. Uh, before powwows were actually a thing in its modern day context, um, the grand entry was a ceremonial time where our warriors, our veterans, those who have been experienced in battle, they would be gathered together in a very ceremonial fashion so that the people can um, know about their stories, about the battles they've been through, the hunts they've been on, and uh, essentially... It speaks to the spirit. Yes. The spirit of the people. Yes, so that's how it began. Um, but over the years, in this powwow sort of fashion, we still have our warriors coming in. Our, you, when we see later, we'll see the grand entry. The men will uh, start the procession. Um, beginning with our flags, the representative tribes that are here. All dancers should be lining up for grand entry. We are going to stop in just a few minutes. You know, these last years have been really hard on, on all of us. And on some of us, it's been especially hard. But it's good to be back again. It's good to see all of these dancers here strong. It's good to see all of these drummers here strong. And it's good to see all of these spectators who have come out again to enjoy our traditions, to enjoy our lands here on Shinka. So we thank you all for returning, and we welcome you. This is a sacred area for us. This is where we dance. This is where we celebrate. And this is how we enter our dance arena with a grand entry. So we're going to ask everyone to please rise during this grand entry in honor of the flags that are being carried and the eagle staffs that are being carried. Young Blood Singers, you will have the grand entry. So we are ready for our 76th annual Shinnecock Powwow second grand entry. Young Blood Singers, take it away.